What's going on here? Well, two J-Mods are in a super secret world with different mechanics than a normal game world, and they're following a bot that the anti-cheating team literally forced to hop to this world. And the bot script seems to not have broken after that forced hop, so the bot is running back to the Revenant Caves to continue to farm gold. As the J-Mods get into one of the Revenant hotspots, Pyrofiends, there are just six bots idling there. I'm not sure if their script is broken or if on this world specifically you can't attack NPCs. I think it's the latter. The J-Mods of course have superpowers on this world and can one hit any account, at which point the account is banned and the contents of their bank appear in a window on the screen. Any valuable gear they're wielding does not appear in this window. So maybe you've seen this recent Jagex livestream or highlights of it. I'm gonna break down some of the more interesting stuff from my perspective. First, the J-Mods kill all these Revenant bots, and they all only have 3 to 4 mil cash in their banks and basically no other loot. They either just muled recently, or having a cash stack of at least like 5 mil triggers them to mule. Unfortunately, the J-Mods don't check the much more popular bot locations in the Rev Caves, like just north of where they are right now. The anti-cheating team was also teleporting bots to Lumbridge for the J-Mods. Here, they take out what looks like a gauntlet bot based on the loot, and then they kill the naked account next to them, which has 300 mil cash on them and some potato seeds. Now check out this account at the upper right hand corner of the screen. It's absolutely decked out for a bot. It has the Fang, Bandos, Torture, the Nate is Not, Face Guard, and an Infernal Cape. My guess is it's either a Theater of Blood bot or a Desert Treasure 2 boss bot. And we'll get into that right after this. I'm so excited for the sponsor of this video, Into the AM. They have graphic tees to add some creative expression into our wardrobe, and there are tons of designs on their website. It's worth looking through because I think you'll find something you resonate with. Check out a few of the designs they sent me. These shirts fit so much better than my other shirts. The cut is perfect. You can tell how nicely it fits on the shoulders. And equally important, but often overlooked, they are some of the most comfortable shirts I've worn. The material is much softer than my other shirts. I'm really impressed. My favorite is the camping themed green tee shown here. They also have plenty of design free shirts that are unobtrusively branded, which I appreciate given all the brands that love to slap their logo across the entire front of the shirt, like this black long sleeve shirt with a small logo on the front. Click my link in the description to get 10% off anything on the website. Look out for their bundled deals like three graphic tees for $65. Thanks to Into the AM for sponsoring this video. We're back, and what's this decked out bot got in its bank? We won't know for sure. The J-Mods did a kill all action, which only shows one of the killed bot's banks, and it's one of the Zolra bots around them, which still had 367 mil cash and 278,000 Zolra scales. We then head over to Prifteness to the corrupted gauntlet, and the bots here risk a little bit more than the Revenant bots. The first bot drops 44 mil cash and a crystal weapon seed. The second bot drops 33 mil, and the third bot, 167 mil cash. It's interesting to see which farms mule more often than others. These gauntlet bots don't seem to mule that frequently at all compared to the revenant bots. Maybe my favorite part of all of this is the fact that some of these accounts aren't currently botting. Real players are controlling them while this event is going on. And so you get stuff like this account blowing raspberries at the J mods. Also notice the public chat is turned off for the J mods and there's definitely a reason for that, but I really wish we could know what some of these accounts were saying. Now, right as the J mods are teleporting away from Priftiness, we can see one of the many thieving bots here. There's literally thousands of them in the regular game and it could have a ton of GP on it, but the mods telly away before smacking it. So we're back in Lumbridge and check out this bot, Runsong2672, full Missouri and a Zerite crossbow, wielding literally hundreds of mils of gear, and in the bank there's a 400 mil cash stack. The rest of the loot signals this was a next bot, the Onyx Bolts, Nihil Shards, and Air and Water Rune stacks gave that away. There are also a few more Zulra bots around, the first one isn't risking that much, and then the J-Mods do a kill all in the area action, which remember only one of the bots killed loot appears for. And based on the loot, it looks like another next bot that maybe wasn't equipping anything at the time, but this one has 1.4 billion GP on it. Seems like next bots don't bank much. The first one had 400 mil cash stack, the second one 1.4 bill. We then head to the Grand Exchange where things get weird. First account is smacked down, 91 mil and a light bearer ring. No idea what that bot was doing, there's not really an indicator. Then another account appears with ranger boots and carols. Username is didn't bot lol. 
Seems like the botter noticed what was happening and changed their name. Then the Jmods collect kisses from another bot, and then in the next three kills, all the bots have potato seeds. Anyone know why this is? We actually saw a lot of bots' banks contain potato seeds, and I have no idea why. I've never heard of any reason. What looks to be a low-level Revenant bot is then noticed, because it's renamed itself Sween's Veins. And if we take a closer look at the Jmods stream, maybe we can see why. On the left is Mod Sween, if you didn't know. Again, I really wish public chat was on. Back in Lumbridge, it looks like the anti-cheating team caught an account with a maxed cape, and the username includes Iron, so it could be a maxed Iron Man, which would be kind of wild to get banned on a live stream like this. The account has tons of resources, including 174,000 rune arrows. We end back at Lumbridge Bank, where a bot in full bandos and an infernal cape is taken out, unfortunately disappointing loot, and from it I can't tell what it was botting. But at the end of the stream, the Jmods show the bank, which which contained the loot from all the bots busted during the stream. But during the stream they only collected a few billion GP, but the loot has a platinum token stack of over 130 billion GP. I was kind of confused as to where this came from, my guess is maybe at the end of the live stream the anti-cheating team quickly banned a ton more bots and sent their gold to the bank. Pretty nice loot all in all. Now during the stream, the Jmod said this. You know what, if you've got any requests for next bot buster stream, send them in. Send yeah. them in, we'll, we'll tally them down. I have a bunch of recommendations. One of the biggest ones is to just do this way more often. And if Jmods don't have time, automate it so that banned accounts go to this world for an hour before they're officially banned. And let the public in. Or, let me in. I'll make a video every single day of the bots y'all catch and send here and show their loot off. You don't even have to pay me. And I've already been doing this in a less fun way for years. I know all the nooks and crannies bots hide around in the game. Anyway, that's my pitch. Let me know in the comments what your top recommendations would be. At the very least, we need to see more of this. Someone sent me a tip about a relatively new merch bot. I was sent lots of footage of this bot. And each of the clips were testing the bot with a different amount of starting GP. Of course, I'm gonna spoil it, the more GP it starts with, the more GP it makes. The rich get richer, and that law applies to bots too. But how much richer? Let's start with the simplest version of the script, which shows a very interesting experiment. What happens when a merch bot starts with only the GP from Tutorial Island, 25 GP, on free to play? Is it able to profit even? I think it's pretty interesting given this is a challenge many RuneScape YouTubers have tried at one point or another, including myself. It looks like the bot is only targeting one item to flip, that is, Adamant Arrows, which I think makes sense given there's a slight margin, high volume, and the bot is able to afford one with 25 GP. I must say, the progress is very slow, to be expected. This clip is sped up and it takes the bot a long time to even make a single GP. It made one GP at the eight minute mark. Then it makes three more GP at the nine minute mark. And in 15 minutes, it has made 15 GP, one GP per minute. Notice how the bid, ask, and margin listed at the top of the screen for Adam and Arrows changes once in a while. That's because the script is hooked up to the wiki real-time prices, allowing the bot to respond to real-time price changes and adjusting its behavior accordingly. And at the 36 minute mark, it actually loses a bunch of GP on Adam and Arrows as the price seems to have dropped significantly. Someone must have dumped a lot of them. So at the 36 minute mark, it has less than 90 GP. Let's just get to the end. After almost four hours, the bot has flipped 11,000 Adam and Arrows for 18K profit which is the trade limit on Adamant Arrows anyway. It's not an overwhelming amount of GP at all, but what if the bot has 300 million GP on it to start in members and uses the wiki real-time prices to recalculate margins across a number of selected high-value items. We can see the target items overlaid on screen, and it includes the 4-hour refresh rate timer so that the bot can start flipping them again if it ever hits the trade limit. Of course, there are much higher margins on these higher-value items. We're talking about flipping things that are worth 50 mil. And the first GP comes in at the 12-minute mark with a 19.7k profit from a necklace of anguish. At the 1-hour mark, the bot has made 1.9 million GP, mainly from a few Din's Bulwark flips and Dragon Warhammer flips for 700k and 600k respectively. It also lost 150k on a Hydra Leather flip. Let's jump to the end again. The footage stops at almost 3 hours, 2 hours and 45 minutes, and the bot has made 7.6 million GP, or 2.8 mil per hour. And the recorder of this clip shows the top profited items over that time. 1.2 mil from Dragon Warhammers, 600k from Bandos God Swords, it even flipped 5 Dragon Claws for 570k. Of course this bot is a cheat, and I'm totally against using it, but 
it is basically providing liquidity on the grand exchange and it's being taxed as well so this bot's activity is actually a gold sink for the game however there are still real players affected by this. From what I can tell, the main people hurt by it is the flippers in game. Since the bot is clearly at an advantage with the amount of data it can process and react to, making it more difficult for flippers to profit. And again, as a disclaimer, I do not recommend botting at all. It's against the game rules. I don't recommend this bot. You will likely get banned. But as far as bots go, from what I can tell, this bot is not affecting the game as negatively as other bots. What do you think? I just got a tip that there are bots abusing innocent Tony who supplies the bandit camp in the wilderness with pizza. The tip says there are level 50 to 60s with mithril scimitars that are buying Tony's pizza bases here in free to play worlds. Since it's in the wilderness, we might as well go see how much GP they actually risk. So I geared up my pure and staked it out. After testing it, pizza bases are only four GP from Tony. He's a nice guy. He sells them cheaply. He's not even trying to make money off of you. On the GE though, they go for over 220 GP. So a full inventory is 6K profit and you can buy 30 per world. Ferox Enclave is a quick banking method from here. So it should be probably around 100K GP per hour in free to play. As I hopped through worlds, I noticed the pizza base stock was less than full on most of them. So someone or something is definitely buying pizza bases. Quick PSA, there's about to be flashing on your screen. I was feeling lazy, so I used the Wilderness Warning plugin from Runelight that makes the screen flash when another player comes into view. And as I was lurking, an account hops in, a level 54 with nothing equipped. It's an easy kill. The account oddly also has 85 Hunter. I find another account, level 62, with a Myth Scimitar, and while I'm attacking it, it continually tries to buy pizza dough. Very likely bots. I also killed a third account with a Mithril Scimitar, but wasn't recording till the kill ended. Unfortunately, these bots don't bring much of a cash stack with them, only less than 1k to buy the dough, since the dough is 4 GP each. So the loot is only a max of around 6k, but this is a free to play money maker, probably around 5 bots are botting at any given time. These bots are so sneaky. I get a tip that there are bots at Tarn's Lair Bank? When was the last time y'all have been to Tarn's Lair? Or even spent much time at the bank there? It's one of the most out of the way banks in the game. Anyway, I find my way there eventually. There are literally booby traps in the way. I haven't been here in at least two years and I start hopping worlds. Pretty soon I stumble upon a level 89 in full obsidian casting a spell. The plank makes spell. And it logs as soon as the animation is done. The account only has 800 total level and over 50 million magic XP. Every two to three worlds I hop to after that, I run into a similar account. Combat level 85 to 95, full obsidian. Many have over 100 million magic XP, some over 150 million magic XP, all casting the plank make spell. By the way, it's worth noting that it actually costs 100 GP just to use the bank here every single time, which obviously deters real players from doing any bank standing activity here. It makes no sense to use this bank unless you literally want to pay not to be spotted. So the wiki says casting the plank make spell is only 250k GP per hour, but there's a big important footnote here. Manual casting of the spell is significantly more click intensive, but significantly faster, allowing for over double the amount of casts in the same time, 1950 per hour to be exact, which changes the GP per hour to over 500k, which makes way more sense. Of course, a bot is going to be manually casting this spell as well. That's also 175k magic XP per hour using manual casts. So a bot with 175 million magic XP has made roughly 500 mil GP just from casting the Make Plank spell in Tarn's Lair. So most of these bots have made 200 to 400 million GP each hiding here. Pretty crafty on the botter's part to pick a bank that costs GP to use so that the bots would avoid players. Let me know in the comments if there are any other out of the way banks you think there might be bots at I should go check out. That's all for me guys. Let me know if you enjoyed the video by leaving a like and I'll see y'all soon.